Did you know that Charlotte has over 200 neighborhoods in it to choose from? 200! That's overwhelming even for me to try to figure out which one's the best one to do. So if that's you, if you're trying to figure out which neighborhood or you're just interested to know a little bit more about the neighborhoods here in Charlotte, this video is for you. We are going to cover 10 of my favorite neighborhoods here in Charlotte with no particular order. They're not off of a list. It's not off of popular opinion. Well, maybe a little bit of popular opinion, but it's just based off of my opinion, which could be a popular opinion. So there's no statistics going into this on who likes what. It just really is a rundown of 10 popular neighborhoods in Charlotte. Hopefully it helps you choose the right place when you're looking to relocate based on your lifestyle and which one's going to work best for you. We're going to start off with one of Charlotte's more well-known neighborhoods. We're going to start off talking about Dilworth. Dilworth is one of Charlotte's classic neighborhoods. It's known for its historic charm and its vibrant community. It really does feel like a local spot. It's gorgeous, it's stunning, it has tree-lined streets, it's got cute bungalows. It is located perfectly just southwest of Uptown. So in my opinion, this really is a the perfect location. It's located just southwest of Uptown Charlotte which makes it close enough. If you're like myself, you don't really want to be in Uptown. This is perfect because it makes it close enough to where you can still enjoy the restaurants and the sports scene and all the amenities that Uptown has to offer without being like inconvenienced. But you don't have to be right in the middle of it. You can be a little bit removed from it. So it offers that, I dare to say suburban because it doesn't feel like a suburbia when you're out there, but it offers that cozy, comforting, but also urban lifestyle in Dilworth. So it's beautiful. It is considered one of our walkable neighborhoods. So if you know much about Charlotte or if you've been researching Charlotte for any amount of time, you've probably noticed that Charlotte is not said to be a walkable city. We're not. I'd love to tell you that we are, but we're not. We do have walkable neighborhoods, but overall we are not a walkable city. We're actually the exact opposite. We're known to be um, a city where you do need a car. Dilworth, you can walk up to East Boulevard um, and you can go get lunch at Kid Kashi, which is one of my favorite spots. It has like a Mediterranean flair to it. I like to think that you're being a little bit healthier because you can get like hummus and pita and vegetables or chicken skewer, but let's be honest, their sauces probably knock it out, but it's why it tastes so good. But you can go get lunch at places like Kid Cashew. You can go do a nicer generic copper. You can go to a local novelty, novelty shop called Paper Skyscrapers. You can go get a massage at Zen Massage. You can go get a facial at Skin by Blair. I mean, really, it's endless. You don't really ever have to leave your neighborhood. Um, you've got medical facilities, like top-rated medical facilities right there. So you're kind of close to everything. Depending on where you're at in the neighborhood, you might be walkable to Freedom Park or you could be walkable to South Boulevard. Um, that will just open up more options for you in terms of things to do. So um, the pros of it are its location, its walkability, it's gorgeous, gorgeous charm. It's historic homes. You've got one of my favorite businesses, right? Kind of located center of the neighborhood called Dilworth Tasting Room. Another local business I had to say because it's one of my favorites. Um, but with all of these pros, it comes some negatives. So what are some of the negatives? Well, for starters, the cost of living. This is much higher than the average cost of living in Charlotte. Right now, the median sales price, median home price is in the mid eights. So, and that's also, there's a whole nother layer to that of it's in the mid eights and you're not really getting a ton. Like you're not gonna walk away with this massive, massive house for that price point. You're actually gonna get a smaller bungalow, you're gonna get a, um, a small pot of land, and you're gonna likely get an older home. So another con is not a lot of new construction. There's just no space. So there's not a lot of new construction going on. Um, you might end up seeing a lot of renovations happening, but not a ton of new construction. Smaller lot spaces, older homes, higher price points and on top of that because it is a busier area and because the lots are smaller the population over there is heavier so there's going to be limited parking so the streets can get busy you're going to notice a lot of parking on the streets um so that might just be a little bit of frustrating when you're you know coming home every day and you have to like search for a parking space um so with pros come the cons so that is Dilworth neighborhood it is one of my favorites it is beautiful even if you just want to go take a walk and visit some of the local shops in the area we're gonna hop right on next door to Dilworth's neighboring neighborhood called Myers Park. Myers Park is one of Charlotte's most prestigious and picturesque communities. It's known for its historic homes, it's known for its 
um, tree-lined, gorgeous roads. Like I'm saying, like not just tree-lined, but like it has a canopy over Queens Boulevard. It's stunning. It's also known for its um, large, well-manicured lawns, as well as its stately home sites. The homes that you can see while driving through Myers Park are truly one of a kind. You can see anything from colonial style to Tudor style to super, super modern. I mean, they're just, they're gorgeous. Every single one of them is stunning. Um, they do have larger lots. It is an older, well-established neighborhood. Um, it does feel a little isolated from the rest of Charlotte. So depending on what you want, I like I can't throw this one into their urban living. You're not far from the city. That's one thing that kind of carries it is its location. It's located just south of Uptown. So you do have really easy access to its neighborhood, Dilworth or Uptown, not even too far from South End, although traffic will make it feel like it's forever. Um, but it doesn't have a lot of amenities. So. I don't want to throw this one into a suburban feeling, but I also don't want to throw it into an urban lifestyle just because it's not really neither of those. It's just a stunning community. It is known for its um, school districts. You are, oh, you're usually in the Myers Park School District, depending on what neighborhood you're in, and that could change at any time. But at this point in time, Myers Park is still known for its top rated school systems. It does have a little bit of community to it and a little bit of walkability depending on where you're at with it. So Myers Park is huge, um, but if you're, depending on where you're located, you could be walkable to Parkwood Shopping Center or Selwyn Avenue. So Selwyn Avenue has a couple restaurants and local boutiques on it, such as Reed's Fine Food, Reed's Fine Foods, or Selwyn Pub. Um, Selwyn Pub is a Charlotte staple. I feel like it's been here forever. They are known for their transfusions, which I don't know if it's a Northern thing, um, I didn't know what it was even being in the hospitality industry for so long. I had no idea what a transfusion was until I went up to Pittsburgh, learned it's a cocktail. It's really popular on golf courses, but for whatever reason, Selwyn Pub is known for their transfusions. Um, has a really good like kind of football casual vibe to it, but then you also have restaurants such as the Jimmy and you've got shopping boutiques. So right in that small area, depending on where you're at in the neighborhood, there is some walkability to it. You're also located not far from Freedom Park, so you could easily walk to one of the many entrances that Freedom Park has to offer. Other than that, it's not really walkable to a lot of things. You will need a car to get really anywhere from here. On that note, that is one of the biggest negatives of it, is it is designed to feel a little isolated. So you do kind of feel removed, and with that comes a ton of traffic congestion. And they're always, always, always doing some sort of construction down there. So. It does get a little heavy. You also pass by a few churches, which on Sundays, um, they park everywhere. So it does get a little bit more, or a little bit even more congested. So traffic congestion is a huge negative there. The home prices, um, the average home price right there is uh, 1.5 million. So you're not getting in there for really under half a million. You could get something for around like mid sixes, but it's gonna be like a 1500 square foot knockdown you're gonna have to rebuild kind of thing um so while it is gorgeous it is a more luxurious lifestyle it's picturesque it's a stunning park one of my favorite times to go drive through this neighborhood is of course during christmas times so who doesn't like to look at mansions lit up with christmas lights so one of my favorite neighborhoods is in fact myers park okay we have focused a little bit on kind of like this southern area of the charlotte we, we classify charlotte by the loop right so we've kind of focused on the southern area inside the loop. So before we start bouncing north, south, east, and even further west, we're gonna stop right in the middle. We're gonna stop at Uptown Charlotte. Uptown Charlotte is our city center. It is our downtown area. Yes, we do call our downtown area here Uptown. It is because it's actually elevated a bit higher than the rest of the city. That's it. That's the big secret. I've heard so many things about like, oh, it's we're called the Queen City as well. Like the Queen Elizabeth, something that I, I, we've heard of all. Um, no, it is just elevated a bit higher. That's how we call it Uptown Charlotte here. Um, it doesn't make sense. There are probably other cities in the world that are also elevated higher, but here we are with our, with our uniqueness. Um, Uptown Charlotte is a vibrant urban space. It's known for its skyscrapers with a little bit of historic charm. It's known for its delicious dining options and its culture and its entertainment scene. You have everything there. You've got um, all the museums, such as like the Levine Museum, you've got the Mint Museum, you've got the Blumenthal Performing Arts Center. You also have a ton of the sports arenas. You've got the Bank of America Stadium, you have the Charlotte Knights Stadium. Um, so you've got a ton of 
things that you can go do for the day or bring visitors to. It's also really easy for public transportation. The light rail stops right in there and you can go north or south from there. So if you need to get somewhere in the city, um, Uptown's a really easy space to start. It's also pretty walkable. It has a ton of delicious restaurants. Um, sea Level is one of my favorite seafood restaurants here in Charlotte, that's Uptown. It has a 7th Street Market, which has a bunch of different vendors in there, which is really good for a, like if you work Uptown and you're doing a lunch break, that's really good because you get a lot of different options. Um, it's also a business center. You've got like Wells Fargo, you've got Bank of America, you have, um, Honeywell is located uptown, so you also have a lot of really large businesses up there. So it's a business hub, it's an entertainment hub, it's a food hub, um, and a huge residential hub as well. They have amazing condos in uptown Charlotte, whether it's condos or apartments, they have some incredible ones with some amazing amenities in it. So um, uptown Charlotte is clean compared to a lot of other larger cities, um, Boston, Chicago, New York, Pittsburgh, Charlotte is a really clean uptown space. Now I know it's much smaller than a lot of other larger cities, but it's still pretty clean. Uh, some of the downfalls of it, parking, of course, anytime you go to any downtown area of a city, you're gonna have to pay for parking. Our parking garages can be pretty annoying right now. Um, I think like in other areas, it used to be easier to park, you know, when you go to South End or you go to Nutter or something, you could find a little bit more parking, but Uptown has always been pay to park no matter what you wanna do. Um, obviously a downfall of it is noisy. Uptown, like many other places, are going to be noisy and a bit crowded. Um, parking, there's not a ton and you're going to have to pay for it. And when you do find a residential place, there is likely going to be a smaller living space, um, mostly in going to be in a high rise or one of the older buildings over outside of the fourth ward or something. So um, it's going to be smaller. It is going to be more expensive. There are a lot of places to rent in Uptown Charlotte um, and it has really good public access to public transportation. So pros and cons of Uptown Charlotte. We are going to swing it over to the east side of Charlotte and we are going to make a stop in our next neighborhood known as Noda or short for North Davidson. Noda is for sure a local favorite here. It is known as an artsy neighborhood. It has an eclectic creative vibe to it. Uh, you can walk down the streets and you can see a ton of colorful murals and there's always some sort of art gallery or um, artists set up on the sidewalks kind of showcasing their artwork. There's always live music going on. There's a ton of live music venues along with a ton of local eateries and coffee shops. Um, so it really does have a cool, unique feel to it. It definitely does feel a little bit more artsy, a little bit more eclectic. Um, I don't want to say grungy, but it is older. So it does kind of have that little bit of a grunge feel to it. I personally love it. It is one of our walkable neighborhoods here in Charlotte. It's surrounded by a ton of residential options. You can get anything from a newer home, you know, built just last year or still being built to a town home to a bungalow that was built in the 1940s to a small brick ranch that was built in the 1950s. So there's a ton of residential options over in the area. Um, this is also right off of the light rail, so great public transportation. So you've got culture. That's one of my favorite things about Noda is there is culture and there's a community feel to it. It's lively, it's high energy. It is also an entertainment district. Um, you've got coffee shops such as Amelie's, um, bakery, Amelie's Cafe, you've got Cabo Fish Taco, you've got so many options down there and there's some local, there's some, uh, there's a donut shop that was like eating donuts out of a window, it was really cool. So you've got just a ton of different options down there. Some of the downfalls, of course, we're going to go to the traffic again, I'm not going to stay here, but traffic is there. Um, the noise level, it's an entertainment district, it's walkable, so it is gonna be a higher noise level. And of course, there is a gentrification process still happening in Charlotte. We have seen so many neighborhoods completely change. Um, so you never know what you're gonna get. Uh, it doesn't all look alike, it's not cookie cutter, which is one of my favorite things about it. So if you're in the area, if you're looking to go walk down the street and just kind of take a look at a unique area with a really strong sense of community, make sure you check out Noda. Our next stop, we're gonna go south and we're gonna visit a suburb of Charlotte. That's right, we are also stopping and visiting suburbs in this video. It's not all about urban living. Um, I can do another video for that for you guys, but we're gonna stop and visit Ballantyne. Ballantyne is one of Charlotte's premier suburbs. It's located in the southern part of Charlotte. It's known for its upscale living, um, abundant amenities, and excellent schools. 
So if you have a family and you're wanting to be in Charlotte and you need a little bit bigger of a home and you want your kids to be in a great school zone, you might want to check out Valentine. It's beautiful. It's well manicured. Um, the roads are all paved nicely. Um, it's convenient. There's a ton of shopping centers down there. You've got Stonecrest. You've got um there's a ton of shopping down there. i can't even think of them off the top of my head but there's like two targets within a two mile radius um but what is it known for well it's known for its shopping it's known for its great schools and it's known for its single family residents and all of these communities have their own amenities in it which is really really great um some of the cons are its distance from charlotte from like uptown charlotte its proximity is a little a little far so combine that with the traffic that we have here and it does feel a little tedious to make that drive every time so um, if you are commuting back and forth to uptown for work, that drive is going to get old. It does feel very cookie cutter. You know, you do expect the white picket fence. You do expect a two story home. So it does feel a little cookie cutter while it is beautiful. Um, it depends on what you're looking for. It does very much feel like a suburb. They are trying to do a better job at bringing some urban lifestyle down there. So right now there's a project going on called the Valentine Bowl. Uh, they've taken a portion of the Valentine Spa or the Valentine Hotel, which is this well-known hotel. It's a great spa and it used to have an 18 hole golf course. They've taken a portion of that and they've turned it into a very friendly kids park. It has a little amphitheater out there. And then they also have a mixed use development happening filled with shops and restaurants. And um, there's only a handful of places that are open down there right now, but That'll be complete here in the next year, and it is going to be a really, really cool space. Um, North Italia opened up a location down there. OMB opened up a location down there. So they really are doing a good job at appealing to these younger families and all the people that have relocated down there so they don't have to drive so far on the weekends to go do something. So uh, if you're in the area, make sure you keep your eyes open for some more information about Valentine Bowl. It's a really cool spot, and I can't wait until it's done. Okay, next, we're going to head north. We're going to stick with the suburbia feel, and we are going to go visit Highland Creek. That's right, Highland Creek is another neighborhood in Charlotte. It is a bigger area. Highland Creek covers a good area of um, North Charlotte. It's kind of like Northeast Charlotte. But what I personally love about Highland Creek is it's older. Highland Creek is like the older version of Valentine, in my opinion. Um, Valentine's homes are all kind of built in the 2000s or above, where Highland Creek's homes are all built prior to 2000s, 70s, 80s, 90s. So with that, I think you get a little bit more character and you get larger lots. Um, Highland Creek, you can get a single family home. I say larger lots, I'm saying like maybe a quarter of an acre to 0.30 of an acre. There are smaller ones, don't get me wrong, but you do have a little bit more green space, it feels like over in Highland Creek. So not as cookie cutter as what Valentine might feel. Another thing that I love about Highland Creek is all the amenities that it offers. So you do have Highland Creek Golf Course right in the middle. You've got the Highland Creek Sports Complex. And then within each one of these little communities, they all also have their own pools and clubhouses and community amenities. So Highland Creek is super family friendly. Um, people love it over there. They offer larger homes at a more affordable price than what Valentine does. With that comes some downfalls, obviously. You are a bit further out from Charlotte. You know, you don't really have the uh, urban feel that you might be looking for. So Ballantyne is doing a better job at bringing that to Ballantyne. Highland Creek, I just don't see where they would even put that and it doesn't really have access to the light rail. So your public transportation and your urban amenities are lacking over in Highland Creek. But if you're looking for a super family friendly community uh, with larger home sites, really established neighborhoods, some mature trees, beautiful yards um, that offer a ton of amenities, definitely make sure you check out Highland Creek. And our last area that we're gonna cover is Wesley Heights. I'm gonna kind of expand this area. Um, and if you look at a map, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's like Wesley Heights, Biddleville, Seversville. There's a bunch of neighborhoods over there, but I really kind of just wanna focus on the area since all these other areas like really do encompass such a large area. For the sake of this video, we're gonna call it Wesley Heights. This is an area located just slightly northwest of Uptown Charlotte. This is going through a huge gentrification process right now. Uh, we're seeing a lot of new development happen over there. You know, you got Pinky's West Side Grill and you've got Noble Smoke and um, just a ton of restaurants that are going over and it's just continuously growing. There's some restaurants and bars over there. Um, you're seeing new construction so you can get single family, you can get uh, townhouses, you can get condos. It just really is growing up, like blowing up over there and 
um, you'll as you drive through there, you'll see a lot of these new urban developments happening. So um, this will be a really cool area. You can still get in there at a decent price point um, and it's just going to continue to appreciate over there. So uh, for the purpose of this video, this is one of my favorite areas just because I can't wait to see it grow. There's still going to be a ton of diversity. You're just five minutes outside of Uptown Charlotte. You still have close proximity to um, urban areas, you know, urban bars and restaurants. Um, and you still kind of get to see the really cool downtown. So uh, check out Wesley Heights. It's a really cool area. If you have any questions or if you have any neighborhoods that you think should be included in this, make sure you drop comments below. And of course, if you or yourself or somebody you know, you or yourself, if you or somebody you know is looking to purchase a home here in Charlotte or relocate, um, send us a message, drop us a text. We'd love to connect and help you out.